Hi cream puffs and lovely internet people. Today, this is a My Kinda Recaps and we're recapping all the amazingness that was Carmilla Season 3, Act 1. Oh my goodness, 17 episodes. 17 for a grand total of like an hour and a half, hour and 40, I don't even know anymore. So much content. It was like movie length content. Plus, in case you did not know, there are also Mel's podcasts, The Transmissions from the Pit. There are six of them. They're really short, but I watched those immediately after I finished watching uh, Act 1, and they are great. There's no visual. It's all just Mel talking, and there's like a picture. So they're really cool. They add a little bit of extra info for you in case you wanted some knowledge about what's going on over in Corvayland beyond what our people of the library know. So, okay, this recap is going to be kind of condensed. I'm not going to go into everything. If I try to go into everything, we'll be here all week. Just all, you'll just be listening to me talk for hours and hours and hours. I'd be fine with that. You would not be. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the highs and the excitement and general stuff you need to know before you go into Act 2, which does not drop for, I think, two weeks. I know. That's really rough, guys. Folks. Folks, not guys. Gender inclusive language, Catherine. Folks, we're trying. I'm trying. Okay, so let's go. We have Laugh and Laura and Carmilla trapped in the Silas Library. And the library is sort of taking care of them sometimes. The library really likes Laura. The library does not like Carmilla. It literally drops books on her, like poof, on her head. Um, and it throws fish at her. Yeah, she had a fish thrown at her. So, they're in the library. The library is doing magic things. Laura just wants to hide in the library. She's done. She's crafting. She's making Harry Potter things. She's pinning you by Kotex wrappers on the bulletin board to make cool patterny banner little things on it. Um, we know there's a door that has magical powers and you can see different worlds from it. Um, if you knock certain ways and laugh knows the ins and outs of about five or six. Somewhere in there. There's a volcano, a winter world, a steampunk like wonderland, um, a place where everybody showers. <laughs> so there's like a bathroom in Magic Land. Uh, it's very TARDIS, very TARDIS. Uh, so there's that. They're trying to figure out how to defeat the Dean, but get Perry back and stop Corvée. But Laura is done. Laura is like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm so done. Like everything was awful. I'm not a hero. I'm not. No. So Laugh and Carmilla are like bonding as investigative people of investigation. So they have a big board of mystery and they're trying to solve it with yarn and pictures and doodles and occasionally Laura's crafts thrown in and they're trying. They're trying but they don't know. Mystical glasses show up. They reveal runes that say there are four things. Four things that can help them stop the Dean. They need four items that will make it like a circle and they can bind the Dean. But they don't really know what's going on exactly because they're not really sure what the Dean is. Uh, they think the Perry is possessed by like a demon that is the Dean. A, or like the Dean became a demon and is in, yeah. Complicated magiciness. But they're trying to figure out how to get the Dean out of Perry and defeat the Dean. So, uh, while all this is going on, there's relationship -y vibes still between Laura and Carmilla. References are made to relationshipy things even though they are broken up. They do know that they're broken up. Laura says they should just be friends. Things still happen. Laugh even notices things keep happening. They point this out in their own like mini little episode that occurs. They get their own little episode where they're talking to the internet or the ethernet and all the people of the ethernet and they point out that they're doing very couple things. There's something about being naked and soapy uh, that should not have been said by Lauren. She's like, please. Um, there's hair touching, yoga, which leads to broken glasses. They really needed those glasses. Um, so there's still relationships going on, and there is a kiss. Yes, there's even more than a kiss. This is not entirely in order. I'm just talking. There was a lot going on. There is a kiss. So kiss happens, like an angry, aggressive, like, brah, kiss. Um, Carmilla is trying to get Laura to see that she should still want to fight the good fight, but Laura's like, I'm just tired, okay? Perry, as the Dean, Annie Briggs, is rocking the crap out of that role. She is so She's terrifying. Um, she has hench people. Theo is head of the Zetas, and the Zetas who joined up with Corvée as like massive intern stuff, and he's in charge of things. He's still not, 
nice guy. Uh, but Danny is also working for the Dean because she's alive. Uh, and she's, she's not nice. Not nice at all. And she totally does the, the throat thing that Carmilla did to her in season one. It happens. Oh, it happens. They meet in the library and it is, yeah, dangerous and someone exciting shows up because Papa Hollis, Papa Hollis is here with bear spray. Oh my gosh, Papa Hollis showed up with bear spray and I love his character. I love his character so much. I do. Um, he winds up having a conversation with Laugh about pronouns and identity and it's very brief but it's very like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'm, I apologize for any misinformation and he's great. He also is totally upset, accepting of Laura. He is not entirely accepting of her choice of Carmilla as a girlfriend because she's a vampire and he's like, well, I saw your videos because I was here with a family friend whose son was coming here and he was like, bro, I found out your daughter's making videos and he watched them, some of them, not all of them. He's worried about Laura, he's trying to save Laura. There is a giant named Bob who helped him. Yeah, lots of stuff. Papa Hollis is very open-minded. It's wonderful, I love it. Um, he and Carmilla wind up bonding, which is beautiful. Oh my gosh, we learned so much about little baby Laura and that her name is Eileen, her middle name, Eileen. Yeah, she gets middle named. Yeah, dangerous things happen and Papa Hollis is not okay because he wants them to be safe. Yes. Okay, so they find out there are four things that they need to get. Maddie also shows back up because we knew Maddie wasn't dead, remember? Uh, she appears all in black and um, draws some sigils, sigils, whatever, with blood on the mystery board. She uh, also takes her locket back, which they think is actually one of the, um, it's actually one of the four items. There's a book. They need the sword. The sword from season one. The locket. And there's another item that they're going to need to get. So they're trying. They're trying very hard to get the items. But Maddie has her locket back. Uh, it also turns out that Maddie is not entirely Maddie. She, she is also something very big and powerful because you see, the Dean is not a demon. The Dean, <laughs> the Dean is a god. And apparently Maddie is also a god now. So everyone, everyone's a god. We are fighting gods. This is like Thor world in Silas. Yeah. Uh, you want to know how you fight a god? Yeah, you try and get another god to help you fight the god because they need, they need the thing for Maddie. And she's like the counterpoint to the Dean's god. It is crazy, guys. There are gods. There's magic. Lots of magic. They actually do magic. They do like Buffy and magic stuff. Giles would be proud, I think. Um, magic happens. Papa Hollis is actually doing decently okay. He wants Laura to leave. He's immediately like, we're leaving, we're going, we're going. Laugh is not happy about Laura leaving. Carmilla actually tells her to go in like a protective, like you should go. Like it, she wants her to go, just to be safe. But Laura winds up deciding she's not gonna go. She and Papa Hollis stay. She and Papa Hollis are totally gonna help with the fight to take down the Dean. And it is getting crazy. Papa Hollis is helping them determine what the sword will tell them. The sword actually leads them to track down Maddie again so much going on. Um, not only are they trying to find the four items, very horcruxy, very horcrux, it's great. There's Harry Potter crafts, I love the Harry Potter crafts. Uh, there are lots of nerdy pop culture references. Mel gets referred to at, in the podcast, not in the show, as vaguely as She-Hulk, and I'm totally behind that. I, I promote that as a thing, just forever. Um, so it's just, there's a lot going on. The podcasts are really cool. We do learn that Kirsch and JP are both alive. But JP is not okay. Neither is Kirsch, but JP is very not okay. Very not okay. Mel talks about it more in her podcast, but he's not okay. He's very not okay, and I'm very upset. I'm very upset about JP. Uh, Kirsch is being used as a snack pack, so uh, Danny is literally just biting him periodically when she gets hungry or angry or anything. She just bites him. Yeah. Which is not cool because he still likes D-Bear. Like, he's still like D-Bear. Uh, don't, okay. But he's like, he's not like pro her biting him. He's just like not telling her off. Like, she's way stronger than him now. So, I don't know. There is a lot. I know that was a very condensed, like, blah, 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 all over the place sort of recap. But it's a lot. You should really watch this season. It's so good. I don't know. Like, the set is amazing. The library is beautiful. Everything is amazing. Like, the plot is so good and just watching, being able to watch so many episodes in one big sitting is so great and you can live to it with tons of people. My Twitter was blowing up the entire time. Um, it's just, it's so good. It's so good and I can't wait for act two. I just, it's so good. I'm so pleased. I'm so happy. This season is so amazing. It's, there's so many references to season one and it's just, it's lovely and I love it. And act one is already over, which means we only have two acts left. Ooh. It's very sad, but it's like great because the show is so good and you could rewatch it forever and ever into eternity. Like you can just keep watching it until you're old and gray 
or you live forever. One or the other. I mean, you could be a vampire. I don't know your life. Um, but it's so good. It's so good. I'm loving it so much. And Papa Hollis right now is my favorite. Like, Papa Hollis forever. I just, I want to hang out with him and play... What are they playing? They're playing a board game right now on Twitter as I am recording this video. I'm recording this literally after watching it, but the video won't go up till Saturday because I have a video schedule and I am maintaining my video schedule because I like having a schedule. It makes me feel nice and structured in my life, even when I'm running around like a crazy person. So it is so good. If you have not caught up, go watch season three right now. Just go, go do it and then be ready. I'm sure everyone is going to rewatch re -watch Act 1 before Act 2 anyway, but I thought this was a nice way to relive all the excitement. And you can geek out, nerd out, freak out, fangirl out with me here. Uh, you can tell me what your favorite parts were, what you're looking forward to the rest of this season. It's so good. Papa Hollis. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just want to hashtag me Papa Hollis? You can just send that to me. Just hashtag Papa, Ho Papa Hollis forever. Yes. Yes. Safety sequence. The safety sequence. And he figured out the sword because Papa Hollis is apparently magic. It's Yes, he is. Okay, share your Carmela thoughts with me below in the comments or with me on Twitter at Clef Notes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me talking about more amazing and lovely things, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'll definitely be talking about Carmilla more in the coming weeks. Um, you can also find me on the Nerdy Girl Express, the nerdygirlexpress.com. I run their Snapchat sometimes, uh, the Nerdy Girl EXP. And I post recipes on the iZombie Support Group site, iZombiesupportGroup.com. Ooh, and I have a blog, clefnotes.wordpress.com. Bye, internet people and cream buffs.